Yeah, I mean, I look at this picture and it's a reminder that what we're facing today with COVID-19, if President Obama had been president, he would have had to deal with this crisis too. I mean, he couldn't have stopped the coronavirus. But at the same time, he would have listened to the science very early on. And you hear, this is him at NIH with Dr. Fauci. He would have listened to the science and we would not be where we are today if President Obama had been president. Hey, I'm Pete Souza. I was the chief official White House photographer for President Obama and an official White House photographer for President Reagan. Esquire has asked me to explain some things. So this is Princess Diana dancing with John Travolta at state dinner at the White House in 1985, maybe, something like that. I think this was orchestrated by Mrs. Reagan in many ways because the military band started playing a medley of songs from John Travolta's movie, Saturday Night Fever. And then she kind of urged John Travolta to go and ask Diana to dance. The thing that's interesting to me about this photograph is 25 years later, I made a picture of Princess Diana's grandson, Prince George, meeting President Obama at Kensington Palace. And it wasn't lost on me in that moment to remember this photograph of his grandmother, who, of course, he never met. This photograph was taken in 2009 during our first trip to the UN. He had a break one afternoon and decided to play one-on-one -on -one basketball with his personal aide, Reggie Love, who was 20 years younger than him, four inches taller, but they were both very competitive. President Obama at one point blocked Reggie's shot, and when they finished the game, President Obama made a beeline to me, sweat dripping down his face, and he came up to me and he's like, hey, did you get that block? This, of course, is during the Bin Laden raid. We were in this room for 40 minutes as they monitored the raid as it happened. I think you can see the tension on their faces. And I sort of like to tell people that you've got the most powerful people in the executive branch all jammed into this little tiny room, and yet they were powerless because, yeah, they had made their decision in the days and weeks before, but now it's totally up to those special forces guys on the ground. And there's nothing that anyone in this room can do to affect the outcome. And, you know, and really the way of the, the presidency happened in this moment because this raid could have turned out really bad and it might have ended his presidency. So when I look at this photograph, that's what I think of. I believe this was the al-Baghdadi raid. I look at this picture and I wonder whether it's an authentic picture in the sense of it, it doesn't appear that, that it's during the actual raid, just based on the timeline, you know, an hour or so before the special forces even got on the ground. And you look at the faces and it, and it looks almost staged to me. Clearly they're sitting in the situation room. There's no question about that. So I don't mean that it's photoshopped in that regard. I just don't know exactly what what they could possibly be watching. And it sure looks like Trump is looking right at the camera. And if the screen in the Situation Room is directly behind where the photographer is standing, so the photographer has to be blocking the screen. So I, I just question what, what they were watching. This photograph was made on the night that the Supreme Court had upheld same-sex marriage. And a guy by the name of Jeff Tiller, who worked in the press office, had come up with the idea to light up the White House with rainbow colors in celebration. Happened to be a Friday night, so this is all staff out on the north side of the White House just celebrating the decision that had come down earlier that day. This photograph was made at the 50th anniversary of the March on Selma. And while John Lewis, the civil rights activist, who had almost been beaten to death 50 years earlier, as he was speaking at the podium, President Obama, I saw him reach over and grab hands with Michelle and made this picture as they listened to John Lewis. So this is Jacob Philadelphia, a young boy who had come into the Oval Office with his family and had said to the president that my friends tell me that my haircut is just like yours. And with that, President Obama bent over and Jacob touched his head. And I think, you know, now that picture really resonates with especially the young African-American community that, you know, here's this young kid touching the head of the president of the United States that looks like him. And I think for you know generations to come, this picture will mean a lot to a lot of people. This was 
to our last Christmas at the White House, and we had these four, you know, artificial snowmen in the Rose Garden, and I sort of was helping to instigate, uh, as a joke, moving these snowmen so that each of them were peeking in the window of the Oval Office, and we, we did it without letting President Obama know, and, and <laughs> it was kind of a funny reaction when he first walked into the Oval Office, and here are these kind of snowmen peeking into the Oval Office as if they're spying on him. So if asked, would you return with Biden? Usually I get asked, would you be Biden's photographer? And I say, no, I'm holding out for a cabinet position. I really think it's time for somebody else to do this job. I had my shot, I did the best I could. I love Joe Biden. You know, obviously if he calls me, I, I would talk to him, but I really, I really don't think I can put my family through this job again because for eight years, I essentially had no personal life. Um, and I don't know that I could do that again. Okay, so this is Katie Byrne Fallon uh, and her twin boys. She had given birth to these guys many weeks early. They were in the hospital for about three months, and when they were released from the hospital, President Obama called Katie and said, bring those miracle boys in. The caption on Twitter says, Peter Souza makes me miss Obama even more than I thought possible. I think this is just a result of me posting throwback photos on mostly Instagram, occasionally on Twitter. I think this is one of the photographs of Obama and Biden that became a meme. But I also saw the serious side and the emotional side of Joe Biden. Those are the kind of photographs that don't become memes, but are very much revealing of who Joe Biden really is. That's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.